Thank you. 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 Kau ira wna fana ipa ma ipa ite ite ringa kai tua i wotau tahi kai te kai te ngi hanga hanga kina fana pan ite lewa kau ki mai kia tata te huna ora tata wei nei kai te mihia chi kia tata ite lewa kai te mihia chi hau kia ra ni tata nei te mana fenua te mana fenua kai te pupu i tolu i te mau ni o te nei fenua o tata. Mana waktu kau itu mihat sih aku tu lah. Kau itu mihat sih kita pay mal tak? Aduh ini tarik dua. Kau itu mihat sih kita lah. Mete mete awak tapu. Mana waktu mihat sih ni? Kau itu mihat sih kita ini. Jauh hari kita mihat sih kita tahu eh eh hui hui ni di lewa kita pakai tali mai di le langit sih lah. Tapi dalam hal mai, hal mai kita kita warna ngan kita warna ngan ni, kita kuda ngan kita kuda hulu. Ilu ngan kita mihi aroha kita kue mulu mahi langat cila mai cici mata ngan kita ni wa otak tu. Cuma hari ni nak kita mihi aju mai kita kuda fai pagi besi besi tu. Kita mihi aju kita kue meto fana meto tahu ayu aju hoi. Kau itu mihat sih aku itu ni wa. Kali aku mulu nak kuli lo ina di kota Mianui. Kacik guna nama hi, nama hi aruha. Muto kuli lo kau mui atau itu ni wa. Ingu itu cima tana ona ona kuli lo kacik guna he kaki hari cima itu tata ni hui. Kini tata itu mato macam ni ni tera ni. Kacik guna ni ini fakam ini cik aku kia home itu mana kita nak kita nak kita no umat itu itu cik ini ini pun itu cik ini ini pariwana lah kacik guna na 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 mana kita na kimi na na fana ipami ona ona tangan tadi mati lah itu tangan tadi mer oh cila mer tato ini pogi ada ini ini wah kacik guna ini fakam ini cik ini ini cik ini umat itu cuma cik ahli beraci amin. Jom kita tanya. Kia ora. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2019 series Decolonizing Anti-Racist Interventions put together by CARE, the Center for Culture Centered Approach to Research and Evaluation, a research center at Massey University that examines the role of voice in addressing social injustices that we witness in New Zealand, the broader Asia Pacific, and globally. CARE currently carries out projects of democratizing social justice in across seven countries distributed across three continents. Before we begin, let me take this opportunity to thank Massey University, the Pro Vice Chancellor of the College of Business, Professor Stephen Kelly, the head of the School of Communication, Journalism, and Marketing, Professor Stephen Croucher, and the Associate Head of School, uh, Dr. Doug Ashwell, for supporting this series and the work of CARE. Thanks also to Teddy Tetao, Breeze Mehta, Phoebe Ellers, Richard Torres, and Nigel Loe for their support with the series. Special thanks to my colleague, Dr. Steve Ellers, who introduced CARE to the work of Tamayti and worked diligently to make this happen. Thank you, Steve. He's the one that's been leading you in. <laughs> The goals of this series, Decolonizing Anti-Racist Interventions, is to co-create decolonizing spaces for interrupting and dismantling the terror of racism. Racism that is normalized in everyday structures and racism that is explicitly deployed in projects of hate, violence, and colonization. The events of Friday, March 15, depict the timeliness of this conversation on racism and its organizing role in the colonial enterprise, in producing colonialism, in upholding it, and in reproducing it across spaces of ongoing colonial occupation. 
The violence of Islamophobia we witness today is also the violence of colonialism, violence that indigenous peoples across the globe have lived with and struggled against. The time to have this conversation, therefore, is now, as we face the challenge of dismantling racism in our homes, schools, neighborhoods, workplaces, and certainly in universities as spaces for knowledge generation. From Maori struggles against colonialism, we learn a language of hope and a vision for a decolonizing imagination. There couldn't be a better person to guide us in this conversation than Tameti. His voice is a powerful voice of our times as we identify, examine critically, and seek to dismantle racism, colonialism, and xenophobia. We witnessed Tameti's activism in his early involvement with the Maori nationalist movement in New Zealand in the late 1960s and 1970s, his protest work against the Vietnam War and apartheid in South Africa, and his ongoing work with Natamatoa, a major Maori protest group of the 1970s. Tameti teaches us the importance of space in the decolonizing project because, after all, colonization has been about the occupation of space. He has taken part in a number of land occupations and held a hikoi to the New Zealand Parliament. He stood for Parliament as a candidate of Mana Maori in the 1996, 1999, and 2002 New Zealand general elections and for the Maori Party in 2014. Art and creativity have been hallmarks of the protest activities that Tameti has participated in. He has worked as a radio DJ and artist, showing us the ways in which creativity forms the mainspring of decolonization. If his talk today, decolonizing ourselves, indigenizing the university, offers us an imaginary for decolonizing knowledge, and particularly attending to the racisms that inhabit the cellular structures of universities. He will spend 30 minutes sharing with us his wisdom, followed by a dialogue with you all. May I request you to hold your questions until the dialogue part of our conversation. In the event of any emergency, you have uh, doors in the front as well as doors in the back. Welcome, Tami. E chipuneiro hukira e na pu na wau na kanarea na wawa te ore wa tu te rangi eke panuku eke tangaroa haumie huie taikie a he mi ka wana kita kon fanau na a ne te pai ko rero a te na koe a mihi mai mihi mai mihi mai mihi mai I mihi mai rā, ko ta mau nā o manga pōhatu. Me ki rā, ko tū hoe te rā. Ko make tū ki tonga riro, ko te arawa te rā. He piko he tanipa, ko waikato te rā, a ko hau tēne e tūa ke nei nō reira e mihi kaua tana ki a kōtou nā uri. Mihi kaua tana ki a kōtou, e are are mai nei kōtou ki tēnei, i tēnei, i tēnei, i rau te tūa nui o tāne whakapiripiri. E mihi kaua nei ia kōtou e ta haukaina ki rangi tāne e kore o tia nei a tēnā kōtou, a tēnā kōtou. O kōtou nā rangatia. Ka reau i haramai ki konei ki te tohu tohu ia kōtou ho eno ki te whāriki e tahi kōrero ki wāne nui ia kōtou a kia tātau e tauhi o nei i tēnei rā. He a te kaupapa, a ko te kaupapa, a tua tahi ke kōrero au ki te roa, ki e tahi wāpoto, Nā te mea, koe rā te tino pūtake o tō tāu e nā reo. Tērā, ki te tuku whakāru noho ki wānu nui ā tātara. Ko te kupu kai ā hau, e pēne ana te kōre o hongi, hongi a te whewhaia. Hongi, hongi a te whewhaia. Ko te whewhaia ki ā hau, ki ā tūhoi, koe rā te kupu e mōhi ana māta he hoa riri tērā. Enari, Pēne te kōrero, ko te hua riri e kōrero ke nei hau nei nā, ko te hua riri kai waho, ko te hua, ko te riri kai roto iāhoe. 
a koe a nga tino pūtake o te kōrero, e kōrero hia nei e haru te kwana nui a tātai. A ka tika anō mōku i tērā ki te tīmata tano o te kōrero ki rua teitoka tātai rau. A hea ha, koe nei te roa, i rongo ai ni waku tarina, koe nei te, koe nei te, te roa i mōngo hua i rongo ai e hau i nga kōrero. Ko nga kōrero ka te kōrero i hea e hau, e harakau nga ku nga tameiti. Ko nga kōrero ka te kōrero i e hau, nga kōtou nga kōrero. Ko nei la tēnā kōtou, tēnā tātou katoa. I, I was here, I hitchhiked from Christchurch in 1971. Uh, with, um, I was involved in the group called uh, Nga Tamatua. My old friend there, Kura Rāwuri, was here. And we had a, we had a bit of a, a cordial there. And uh, that was just a, during the period of time, uh, things were really interesting period of time for us. Uh, because we didn't have a manual book. We didn't have a manual book to guide us, to give us a guideline to this is where we're going to. So we become, we had to be very creative to try and create, create our own space. Because many of us was a period of time in the 60s as a young man, Leaving home, uh, we had to follow government policy and everything is guided by governments. So they needed to homogenize us. So many of us that come in for the rural area would have to travel away and leave home. And so they sent us to Auckland, Wellington, then I end up in Christchurch at the Christchurch Technical Institute as an interior decorator. And so there was me. So it was a whole new experience for us to go there. But during that period of time, I, 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 I came here, I hitchhiked, I think it was uh, Eddie Weta Nia, Dees Kahotea, all of uh, the early activists out there during that period of time. And uh, we arrived here. Uh, we arrived here at this place. I, I was here about 1971. And so we, uh, it was a meeting place. It become a meeting place. So some of these institutions come uh, become a, a meeting place. Because the early students like Kura Awiri, I, I wasn't uh, a student of the institution, but I was hanging out with them. Uh, you know, I was hanging out with them. And uh, I, I need to hang out uh, with people like them. So it was a, a, a whakapanaunatana. Because we, we had to find a way, because everything was geared up how to be a Pākehā. You know, and how to be you know, obedient, and how you had to stand up every time you walked into the picture theatre in Christchurch or right around the country, then they played God Save the Queen. You know, and so all of that. And so I, I wasn't too sure. I, I, I wasn't even sure where I was during that period of time. You know, in, 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 the, in the first. 20, 18, 19 years of my life. And so um, I didn't basically, I, all I know is it didn't look good, it didn't sound good, it didn't feel good. All of us would have experienced that. And where do you go to? Because mum and dad are not there. There's a group of 60 young Māori men down at the day who are 79 Springfield Road. And all crowded up there when we all been made there, yeah, you do this and you do that. Well, so we had to follow. So there, there we were. And there we so we I uh, had to try and try and try and manage our way around that. And the first time, other than being back at school for quarter of Māori at Ruatiki Māori District High School. And then going to Christchurch was a whole new experience. I never experienced uh, being people being kicked out of um, as a young as a young man walking into a. Um, uh, I worked with an Irish man who owned a small company. He dropped me off at a at a place there in, in Christchurch in um, uh, a unit owned by the Christchurch City Council. So he let me, you go in there, he's the paperwork, and there's all the instructions in there what you need to do. So he took off, so I got all my bags, the paintbrush, and all the gears, knock, knock on the door. 
And so the door opened up. There was an elderly guy. So most of those are old veteran war from the full war and the first world war. And so he opened the door and he looked at me. What are you doing here? Yeah, and I didn't know what to say. You know, I just said, oh, I'm just a painter. I've been dropped off here and I've got a job. So get away. Yeah, so you, you, ex you experience that and you kind of walk away and you... I don't know what to say, mm. because I've never been in that kind of situation, you know, and you kind of walk in. I'm a 16, I'm a 16 year old, 17 year old young man, and I didn't know how to respond to it. I didn't like it, I didn't, want to, I didn't know what to say, so I moved myself, removed myself from that situation, and sat there. We didn't have the cell phone in that period of time. <laughs> so I just sat there, and I sat there for hours. Yeah, because I, I didn't know how to navigate myself in such a, a situation. So anyway, the, the guy, the Irish fellow, turned up about three hours later. What are you doing out here? He wouldn't let me into the place. He got really angry. I explained to him, and he got really angry. And so he, he went into the guy and knocked on the door, and... and had to go with him, so he moved me away from there. So that was a first experience I had of racism. And, and then the, the other thing was, during that period of time, trying to find a place to stay and to find a flat. That was really, in the, in the days when you kind of queue up, you get an egg on the paper, and you arrive at the location, and you arrive there, there are many others there, other people out there. And so I, I think I was in the middle of the, of the, of the queue, and I, I'm assuming either the landlord or the real estate, I don't know, but the guy came in there and, uh, you get, and I go, okay, so I went away. I, I didn't ask why, mm. and uh, that's the first time. And then I went to another place, the same experience. You get, and I just clicked, and when, when I walked away and I looked, in fact, another fellow got kicked out, wore the same colour. Yeah, so you get angry, pissed off. Where do you take that to? What do you do with that? So you get all worked up, and you get all worked up. And, uh, and I think that um, we... We managed to, during that period of time, we just getting him this conversation with a, with a small group of people. And so myself, Eddie Weta, I met up with Eddie Weta, I met up with Kura, and, uh, and a small group of Māori university students that was going to the old Canterbury University in town. And so we managed to have this uh, conversation and then trying to, to work out a strategy plan uh, where do we need to go to and take our Didi to? Yeah, so we did. So we made our plans, and um, by, by then, uh, the, the difficulties for me as a young man, I didn't have a voice because I didn't know what to say. I had difficulties understanding, well, I can understand the English language, but I have difficulties just to stand here like what I am today. And uh, so really, really, really shy. And so I thank my, my mate Eddie Wedania, or our mate, our mate Eddie Wedania, for encouraging us there to talk. All little. And he was hardcore. Yeah, no? and, uh, and so it helped us to, well, help me in uh, many ways there to uh, navigate myself there because there's so many landmines and booby traps in front of us. And so we learn, and so we learn to find and avoid all the booby, tra the booby traps and the landmines. So you're working into their space, and where do you go to? Racism was pretty really hardcore. It's still is around here. Still here around us, so we gotta try and, and find a way. So I'm here today, really, to talk about us. Is to look at colonization. Well, what is colonization? What does it look like? 
I want to give you a little dose of my personal experience of that act. Because my grandfather, my great great grandfather, all experienced that. And the fact that the crow that raised me, found like me, was also the, the person who raised my father. And so I always go back to those old corridors. It's because they share their quarter, they talk about their mummy, but they didn't do anything about it because they spent a lot of their time trying to be obedient, trying to be nice, trying to follow government policy. And so they become dependent to those ideas, co-dependent in the same thing. So they, because then they try to convince themselves, we are the huarahi. If you are not the gorilla, ah, 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 pita na na. If I go to kina ma tau, na ma tau na na ina ina fakaro o te pakeha. Yeah, and so colonization. I've been in trend in all of us. I've been colonized. I still am being colonized. I I had to trying to work those things out. Yeah, and then so, well, what does that look like? Where do we put that? And so in those early days for me, colonization for me as a young man is with the Pākehā Tērā. Yeah, and so, um, Pākehā, Kōkokohua, and all of that terminology that we talked about there. But I started reading, and so, what changed me? I, I started reading uh, books by um, uh, the Black Panthers, Che Zavara, all the socialist theories, and, uh, and they're going there. So there was a lot of conversation, not just only us for Māori, but there was a lot of activists that were happening around during that period of time. All the old activists from the, from the First World War, the Second World War, and uh, uh, a lot of activists of the women's liberation, uh, the high school, there's a big movement of people that oppose to the, um, uh, to the Vietnam War. There's a group of people that oppose to the, uh, to the apartheid system, what happening in South Africa during that period of time. So, so we, were, we, were, we were exposed to all of that. And so um, the seventies was a really interesting period of time there for all of us to be able to collaborate with the activism of activists and, and uh, help us to develop, to try in our own pathways. And uh, while we've been involved there, we were still trying to build up and set up this Māori movement. Mm. Because our, our father, and our own partner weren't too keen about supporting us or even engage and put themselves there to, to support us. So that, that was a really difficult period of time. So we become the pioneer. So we did a whole lot of different actions that wasn't really, wasn't very popular. It wasn't a very popular period of time for us to, to do that. And I guess that uh, it took me a long time there to kind of weave myself there and to find out that uh, who is my enemy? And I worked it out. It's not that color is my enemy. It's not the party is my enemy. It's a system. Mm. It's a system that we need to resist against, a system that do not support our dream and uh, doesn't support our voice, do not support the voice of the woman, of the children, and the larger population here in Aotearoa. So lucky for us during that period of time, so when we did move and collaborate with all of the different movements that are around us in not only in Christchurch, but right around throughout the whole country. And so immediately after I done my three years as, a, as, a, as an apprentice, I completed my apprenticeship, I changed my apprenticeship 
to the new movement as an activist. And I've been committed myself and many others, and many others that I, I remember during that period of time. And so there was the old Communist Party members from the, the old regime of the New Zealand Communist Party, the Socialist Unity Party, all the different uh, group of uh, activists that was happening uh, during that period of time. And so there was the, uh, the trade union movement and the, and the workers' movement, and then so we, um, and, and then we, we trying to weave ourselves around the booby traps there and build up our movement like that, and we had to find a way. And I think for, for me personally that we, um, we can't continue throwing rocks at everybody, but we need to be more smarter about how we can get ourselves there to engage ourselves and look at our future and look at a, at a bigger picture. And, uh, and we spend, um, I, I think that in, in some period of time there, we didn't have a profile uh, we had we had conversation in bringing people like um, finding somebody. It's like a statue, and so we end up with people like um, Finna Cooper. Finna Cooper was a woman. We choose Finna Cooper as the face of the Maori movement uh, because she represents a very strong group of Maori women, and she also been around a long time. But we did all the work. So part of the idea, <laughs> <laughs> we did all the work. So she says, become the tickle tickle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But she got a bit carried away by it. <laughs> yeah, so you, you gotta manage that. You gotta try and manage that so people don't get uh, overexcited and get carried away. But they really to try and to, trying to bring the masses together. So we needed people like Eva Rickard to convince the older generation my father's generation, because colonization creates fear. Mm. They create fear. Created fear with my father. He was scared. Of, he, was, he was scared of me because we share the same name, Tamaichi and Tamaichi. And then so he was real fakama about the fact that my face during that period of time. And so we needed a Finder Cooper and to create a movement of people that can equate there. It becomes the flag. Yeah, and so my father saw this 86 year old doing the equate with the Mokobuna all the way there from the Hapua and Mark all the way. He packed his bag there, jumped on the train there, and came over to Porirua with thousands of other people like him. And so they make a big ship for us there and enable us to have this conversation, don't be scared. Don't be scared. And then once you had to remove that, you had to remove all of that away from here. So that's the first thing. So you need to be a healing process. A mini mini ito naka. A mini mini ito naka. You know, and we are talking about a mass group of people of my father's generation. Before we can even start moving and do other things. And so we, many of us, many of us from that generation decided to make those commitments and, and, uh, and, and start moving that. And so everything had to be at all different levels. I'm not the best for you to ask me to go and talk to those people, but I know somebody better looking than me but a, a better voice than me, as a much calmer person. So we gotta be able to find and pick uh, people in the space that are able to do those things that we, we can do, where we can do things. I think that the, um, it's my own opinion to this matter and this thought, uh, the Waitangi Tribunal it's a process that's really created from the actions over a period of time. And so after I've been having conversation with, with a politician and many others and many other groups here, so they come up with a whakaro about 
the Waitangi Tribunal. For me personally, because I never used to think that was a good idea at all. And so, it, so I, we, we talked about it. Chu Hui talked about it. My generation, we started talking about it. We decided, let's have a go. Let's put our corridor in there. And the great thing about it is, and the amazing thing about that is that the um, many whānau had their own stories. And so they has created the database internally within our whānau. They're able to write their own story so they can put their voice and their kōrero in front of this table. And that they can take their mamai, their pain, their roimata, and put it in a, in a place there to, to share it. And so they no longer had to refer to uh, Alston Beast uh, used as a reference to talk about their own kōrero because they got their own quarter. And, um, and the other thing for me too, that we had to find a way, how are we going to get ourselves away from this mamai? You know, and so we had to talk about it. We cannot take ownership of somebody else's raruda. And so for the apologies for me, and when that wasn't very long ago, and when the, uh, the apologies arrived to Tanya, to two to Hoi there, it almost, you can hear it. I mean, some people didn't agree with it. Some of our whanau didn't agree. What are they apologizing for? What for? For me, we had to leave some things and let it go. Because the biggest challenge that we have is, is to talk about mana, mutu, hapia, tino, ranga, tira, what you, what do Tino Ranga Tira Mana Mutu Hake look like? What the sovereignty look like? Does it have a color? Does it have a shape to it? Does it have a smell to it? So it's a big challenge for us. We're still working through it, but also it's an exciting times. And so we are able to bring those people on board and then for us to challenge each other. And then the first thing for us there is to wete wete here at the park hatana kairo to yakoi. So we gotta unravel the colon the colonization, the park hatana kairo to yakoi. All of us got that. What are you pulling now? Where are we gonna go to? So here we are. So in the last few days for me, I've been having this um, conversation with uh, Steve and my friend over here. So my will and my chance really is to, how can we get this institution to acknowledge, to acknowledge that the kaupapa are there on the Amarai? Why do, why do I, as a tūhoe, need to come here and learn about my tūhoe tāna, or my rangi tāne tāna, or my waikato tāna? Why should I go to Waikato University and to learn about that? Doesn't sound good. So it's a process. So we need to look at and find uh, the way that we can weave ourselves. It's like weaving like the kete. And what are you going to, why are you weaving and what are you going to put in the kit there? So my challenge really, we're working on it for the next few days, uh, is to find a pathway. Then how are we going to, without the institution, feel threatened by the thought I'm going to share with you. And how we, we here, under the, the power of the, of the colonizer, of the colonizer. So my will is, uh, how are we gonna build up a, a whakapanauna tana? Because I really believe this, um, we need to work that. We work out the plan there so we can work out with the tana to when we are here. But that's up for you to work out with the here of Goto Marae uh, as, um, as a way that we can mahitahi. 
So it needs to be a conversation with Mohan and to, to have a, to talk to all the Tomata. So they need to be they need to be a place where they can have a cup of tea and and talk about what I'm trying to say. And that we can work together. Mm. It's not gonna happen today, not gonna happen tomorrow. We create and process it and working it out. Because I think it's really important that we do that. I think it's, it's really to try and build a space so it's not, it, it needs to acknowledge the mana that you have here and also the mana that you got around in the same space and pull all those to, to working together. And so, um, so people that I have met a lot in the last couple of days, that they don't see this place at all. It doesn't exist for a lot of the kids that I'm talking about. And so, so they, but, they, but they also need a place, not just on the street and having a hard time. So th they need to be feel comfortable. So they need to be that poor little and that whakapano uh, natana, that the institution needs to be working along that side and maintaining, maintaining their mana and the mana of the tana the whenua over here. And they work like that. And I think that's... Uh, a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my widow used to use a follow here, Steve here, with the full You know? And so he, uh, so he have a responsibility. And we all have a responsibility. Don't just leave it to these people to do it. All of us have to be, to be engaged. And let's create this conversation. Let's create a language for it. Let's help others there that don't have an understanding. Don't be afraid of that. Mm, don't be afraid of that. You can be who you are. And so we have to create that space. Here we are. We already got a space called the Barayatia. Yeah, where you need to place here. Where do you take your didi? Where do you take your didi? Well, for most of us, I mean, there, we, we put our didi in their puku. And they go and build up and build up and go. Become ugly. Somebody else get hurt. Mum, your sister, everybody. So you need a place there where you can release that, so you can create that space. Because that's what happened on Friday. Because somebody carried his own thoughts, his propaganda. And as a result of his city, of his poor hair, he here we are back to the same situation again. So we need to find to prevent that to happening. So we need to create a space that enable for people will have different opinions. Mm. And they, so they don't store it up there and then it's going to create a chaos. Mm. We experienced chaos in our country for 200 years. So we, we should be brightening up, and clearing up in our own minds, so we at least find a pathway that we're able to uh, a generate and action, not just lip service, you know, not just to look good or to feel good for your for yourself. So activism, we really need to activate our community, to activate and participate and have a conversation with the institution and then we can, uh, little steps, doesn't have to be huge and big. But those little wee steps there, and you can build up like that. You don't want to build something big because it will collapse. You know, you, so you got to find, get the foundation. You know, you had the karakia, you had the, you had the leeway, you had the vegetarian, all of that are all pulled together there and put them in the, in the space. So anyway, so it would be nice if we can have a chat about it. What's your thought? Mm. Where you're thinking this? Do you think the idea works? What would you do? Who you work with?
spiritual arts. I'm here with Bob and Kura. Kura's my supervisor, actually. I'm pretty lucky. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, I just uh, delivered a uh, presentation that sounded a little bit similar to that with regards to um, how, do we, how do we heal, uh, our, how do we re-indigenise ourselves to ourselves if we as Māori have been brought up without uh, that knowledge, you know. Um, and um, one thing that, that I like to do is to, yeah, do that within, within rituals, within a creative sense, so that, so that that's really open. You know, the imagination's open and, and we yes. reimagine it. So, you know, while um, paying heed to tikanga and kawa of our, you know, <coughs> our, our tangihana, all of that, relating that though to to our own ai, really creating space for us to to talk about these things together, a safe space. Right, so, mihia te nui ki ate. You know, the, uh, the ancient story in all of us would have some kind of core understanding of uh, Rani Rauko Papa. And in the, at the time when Rani and Papa were intimately locked up together, and so the one of the child had a bit of a peek down on the keke and thought, so, well, I won't be there. And so, so that child went back down and had a talk to Tāpiri Māte and had a kai te hea kia au ki te hāre ki te māi ki te ātea. I want to go to the space. There's all the space there. I don't want to hang out here and locked up in here. So they created a conversation. So the other talking, waste them. Get rid of her. Knock them out. <laughs> Dāne was the one that came about there and And you had the space there, you did work there. So those corners were already there. So we created, many of us, from mum and dad, we need to go away and create our own space and be creative about that space. So the corner is already there. How do you interpret that, that the ancient corner that can fit into us? And so our, our whanau, not feeling scared, going to the marae. Because they think they might have to give a karanga and give a pai call and all that. It's not about that at all. So we need to, to share the thoughts in the understanding of the rituals. And the ritual is, is a guideline to understand more about who you are. What are you about? And rather than a scary thing to be. Yeah, and so we can make it really friendly and easy, adaptable. For us, we to be understand more about that space. It's not about, and not about the marae out there. It's not a place there that women can't talk. You don't have to be in the marae on the marae uh, to have a voice. It's the ritual because the place that you make decision and after your marae out there is in the tip of the body. You're under the umbrella of Dani Tawana. And where you can have a relax, in the Tara Ichi, uh, the, tara, the Tara Nui. And then so all the understanding that so, so we, we, we had to find the Marae Ate that we can able to talk to this institution. Yeah. So they need to understand what they look like, what shape and form that is, and be able for them to be able to participate and collaborate with them the Fin. Not to be afraid of that, and they might lose that mana and lose that power. So we, we need to we'll get together and we can. It's not about tick box, oh yeah, we're going down to your marae down there. So it had to be something more uh, constructive and well planned that we can work it. And I believe that we can make that work. We can only make that work, make that work if we all be yes. part of the space and make it happen so we can create the movements. Then we can celebrate and dance and eat. Yeah, kia ora. Do you believe that um, the older generations, 
as well as you know, previous generations as to what the ones are now. They can choose it. <laughs> Do you believe that they have a responsibility to teach our youth these days about the responsibilities of getting to know your individuality and identity? <coughs> Yeah, what they even need to have to, to invest rather than uh, try and get, even need to put their money into as a part of the, the treaty settlement uh, to feed and fill the money in there. So they need to be some conversation, they need to get a part of those, even or part of those hapu, to create those conversations. Very much what we did as Na Tamoto, as young people, to provoke. So you got to provoke it. Poka chumu chumu te te na ko te tangata, and because only you can talk to your own and have this space. And these are debates, so you can ask the same question, not to me, but you put that uh, that that part and that part over to to your to your iwi and to your partner, and uh, and then just really find a way, because everybody will get up to be somewhere else and invest their money into the fisheries and put it somewhere else and try to build an empire. Yeah. There's no focus around the people, the tangata, uh, our kids. So everything is <coughs> trying to be with the capitalist system, to follow the pattern of the capitalist system. I'm a socialist. I want to build up a socialist movement. And that's where we got to go to. How I understand socialism. <laughs> for the system to, to create our space. We, we have to be creative and create our own space. Mm -hmm. I, I think that there, 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 are, there are different levels and stages that how they can be part of it. In, in the same conversation that I'm talking about, how do we get this institution there to support it and have a collaboration with with Tangata And And so you got to go with that. Because you need to go to Rangi Tane where the oil with the knowledge is. So we need to develop. If they don't have the oil there, we need to just support that and do some rangahau in research that we can bring people to support those hapu. You know, I, I, I don't want you to go and ask the system so you're beating. You don't want to do that. You've got to maintain your own mana. So you need to work uh, in the way it's almost like what we've done as an Atamoto to create this conversation, provoke it, pakatuma tuma, mini mini, and it's like walking. So you build your body, you build your space. And so maybe that, that, uh, if you need to invest their money and put their money where they need to be, because, they, because uh, the people on the ground need to take ownership of that. You can talk, I can hear you loud and clear, but you <laughs> Yeah. 
you just got to be persistent and move there if you really think that's where you need to be. And so, but never go alone. So all, all that's really to, um, you, you need to talk to an api. You need to talk to somebody that you trust that are able to up you and then take you to where you need to, you need to go. Uh, I, I like people like Eva. Eva Rickard is a good example of somebody who, uh, yeah, I'm a woman, you know, she's a bully. But a good bully is a good thing, in a good way. Because you need little bullies like Eva Rickard. Because she's not afraid to, what's she doing? What are you doing doing nothing? You know, so you, so you, you, gotta, you gotta have that. You gotta be able to, to do it because then, then, and then that's why I like people like her. Uh, I was really inspired by her in the way that she talked to a lot of women. She spent a lot of time talking to to all the wahine. And you gotta be very smart about it, knowing the ritual, because she's one of the very few women I see talking on the marae, not on the marae out there. So she go and walk into the mahau to fight. <laughs> so nobody can shut you down. <laughs> so everybody had to hold their breath and have to listen to her. Because she understands those rituals in, in the same place. So you got to be, so, so you're not walking on a booby chair or a landmine. So you avoid the landmine, so you're walking in there. So once you know that, they respect you for that, then they have to listen to you. They can't shut you down. <laughs> and so all about the ma and the order of your father and your hapu. So you need a, a lot of work around that because we have to do the same thing. So I am able to do what I want to do because I understand the space. I feel safe about it. And uh, because that's what Tane, that's what uh, the children of Tane have created. They created the space for us there in the separation of mum and dad, they created a space for us here to be able to have a voice in several ways. And it doesn't have to be the conversation between the kai karana and the kai bohiri. That's the voice. And the voice are giving information. And there's a response in it. So those are the first conversations. And then you know who's coming, who's arrived, then you know the whakapapa. And within a short period of time, they're having those conversations. And knowing where you need to place yourself. It's a big thing that we need to ask and share those knowledge. And, uh, and we can tell that story to our tamariki. So as they grow, we can share those stories so they understand more about themselves and know more about their space. So they're not placed into an unsafe situation and to make ourselves safe. Yeah, I will never ever put anybody in an unsafe situation unless you know how to handle yourself. But you need to avoid that. Okay. Kia ora. Kia ora. Ko tami toku ingoa. Um, I'm uh, speaking on behalf of the health sector, but also for, for everything else. I'm a, a midwife and a registered nurse, and in a lot of the, the circles, we're often in groups as Māori representative, and it is, like you were saying, often the lip service or the tick box and how, you know, how we are a voice, but actually it is, in its essence, sometimes just a tick box, and there's no actual movement. And just really moving from we seem to be quite reactive, a reactive society to get anything changed. An example for yes. both health and in recent from Friday, that it is, for an example, it, it's taken this tragedy mm. to have a short, quick action, for example, for the, the gun reforms, whereas before this, 1997, it, it's been talked about since, but it takes tragedy um, or very stark health statistics for anything to change. We only seem to act on reactive or tragedies to move with any speed. And in particular too, when it comes to when things are highlighted that there are deficits or um, issues, 
inquiries often have very little Māori voice yes. um, when they're particularly governmental-led. And how can we change that too? Because they're often affecting a large portion of our Māori population in um, whenua. And we have very disproportionate um, voice and involvement in that, and I think that is um, grossly... Uh, we are misrepresented a lot in that, and how do we change that? Thank you. Well, I, I think when, you know, we, um, I, I don't rely up, upon the mainstream media is the way to, to, to put our boy out. So, so we've got a whole different world to get. We can do our own propaganda and, and put out all that uh, out of the, through, uh, on, the, on the website, the, on, on um, Instagram, uh, there's a, there's a and social media. And we, we can put those kind of quarter around like that uh, and build up a movement on that alone. And, uh, and you have this conversation and you, get, you, you, you create a, a chat group there in the several places that you've got there. So we create, we got our own little, I use WeChat with another group of people that I'm working with. Uh, I use Instagram so we can have a little quarter around that. And uh, on the, for a lot of artists, uh, I have a lot of conversation with the artists and having these uh, types of conversations and, and trying to work out a way where we can take our art. We can use art. It's another example. It's a vehicle uh, that you can take the quarter of your, what you're talking about. And so we can group. So the artists have a role to play. And so we can, um, they can create a space there that enable to provoke some thoughts and around some of these things that we are concerned about it, or want, we want to build something around it, and to celebrate, and to celebrate our existing our beings and all that. So there are many ways that we can do that. It's just enormous. And so we just be uh, aware that uh, the availability of the, of the resources that we have. This will be our last question. I'm looking at uh, the time, so let's just take one last question and we wrap up. Um, my question really is, especially given what's happened on Friday, is around, I don't know whether this is my Pākehā side, my Tauiwi side, but for me it's not wanting to impose, you know, like, like, um, and, and I think that's to do with even in my community in terms of when you approach people to have a conversation, it's doing it in a way, sometimes I'll be like, it's that shyness, but it's also I don't want to impose on, onto people, you know. So it's how to um, really, yeah, kind of move forward in that way. So sometimes people are a bit afraid to um, start the conversations up, you know, because they don't want to impose, say, to a different culture or whatever. And I guess that's my question. Um, I just wonder what your cordial was uh, around that. Yeah, yeah. The thing I like about love about art, you know, you you um, people go to the galleries. They, people look at art mm. because it's because it's an eye contact stuff. Mm. You don't have to say anything. You just walk in. Yeah, because you're, you're, you're thinking, you're working, you engage yourself in your engagement to, to look at it. So if I do a, a dummy ET exhibition, and I will put, put the, it's not about straight lines, and it's, it really is, it's the colour, so you go in there. Because every person in here looking for something, we're all looking for something. So you walk into this space and you go, then the eye meets something. Then the eye will make that particular image and go, it's here. 
they can write a tangi about it, or they can talk about it, and then you can open your voice. Then you have the voice. And sometimes that, that your voice is actually in the image, in the picture. They help you to build that. You know, and um, that's what I love about art, you know, and, uh, and working, because it's, it's also it's a, it's a healing process and, and help you to take, to, to, to see things differently. You know, and uh, it may be in the colour blue, and the blue will give you something else that uh, reflects in your memory, and it hits you there somewhere, either in your puku or your, your manawa, all of that. Kia ora. No reira e huama, ka tinoa tēnei kōrero e tēnei wā. E mihi kaua tanei kia kōtou, e mihi ane ia kōtou, i are are mai kōtou, thank you for your participation. Thank you for here in the space. And um, I'm putting the challenge to you, the thought that I have, that uh, let's make the thought of the institution and to support that the Tanata Femia, let's put something together and in support of the idea. No reira, kia ora kōtou. Thank you so much, Tame, for opening the space and hopefully an invitation to our conversation. Jason. Uh, kia nui tātou. <coughs> kia tau, kia tātou katoa. Te atawhai o tō tātou ari ki ahu koraiti. Me te whiwhina tahi tana ki te wairua tapu. Ake, 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 amene. Yeah. Kia ora tātou. <laughs>